Shalom, my bitches. Myandis here at NFY, bringing you the first in our next long-form series, When Death Worlders Meet, by Andrew's second account. Did it resist? the captain asked. It's a male, and as you've already guessed, it's sentient. So no, he didn't resist, replied the ship's veterinarian, a shockoth named Ginta from Free. Captain Anticatoon rolled his eyes. He forgave the woman for her poor attitude. Her race of graceful, two-armed, four-legged undulates were a law-abiding sort of people. They could never be comfortable in the exotic animal and slave trade, even when their job was only to keep the merchandise alive and in good health. It was fortuitous, then, that she didn't have much of a choice, being merchandise herself. That wasn't to say she was for sale, only that she wouldn't be for sale until a better veterinarian came along. A tiny whelp like that. He wouldn't have stood much chance. He must be smarter than he looks, the captain said with a chuckle. Be grateful to it. Since you didn't need to patch it up, you can have the rest of the day to yourself, unless something comes up. The short fur on her back, brown laced with white, lowered a bit. He wasn't used to seeing her without her hackles up at all times. He wondered if that meant he was going soft. He'd have to extend her hours tomorrow to make up for it. There's something you should know about him, she added before turning to leave, her tone brighter than normal. He seems like a nice young man, but I think he could have done more harm than you suspect had he resisted. He's heavily muscled, much more so than even a high-grav world would require. And... He's a carnivore. That gave the captain pause. Carnivorous species were a rarity in the universe, and sentient ones were even rarer still. In fact, he couldn't think of a single intelligent species that routinely chose to eat the flesh of other creatures. Except for one. Glancing to the deck plates beneath his broad hooves, he thought immediately of the lithe predator lurking in the deep cells in the bowels of his vessel a night beast from a Class Eleven death world. Its sentience was highly debatable. Captain Anticatoon ran his thick tongue over his blunt teeth. He didn't think this hairless whelp was anything like that at all. That's not possible, he said. Our newest guest, what did he call himself? Human, said the vet, named Steven. The human has herbivore teeth. I don't see how he could possibly be a carnivore. Up close, he did not display his teeth much. But when he did, I noticed a set of fangs. Very, very small, almost like the rest of his teeth. But there, she pointed to the space between her incisors and molars. Two on the top, two on the bottom. Little fangs. Really? He didn't believe her. What else? Don't tell me you didn't notice the way it stares. It's two eyes. How do they make you feel? Deeply, instinctively fearful. Creeped out might be a better word. The thing was tiny, chest high, but... And when I was trying to figure out what to feed it, the Ginta continued, I was shocked to discover that fully one half of the rations in its craft by calorie count, were comprised of animal protein. She looked sick, and he could sympathize. It was one thing to talk about eating flesh in an academic sense, but to actually have to see an animal's carcass dressed up for consumption up close? Disgusting. Point taken, he said. I'll be careful around it. That meant he'd be armed and wouldn't hesitate to shoot it. Novelties like a new species were worth money, but not that much. Not enough to risk his life. And he might even just kill it for fun. Every time he went on vacation, he spent more money than the creature was probably worth on more pointless and less satisfying pursuits. There's another thing to be wary of, said Anakatoon, thinking aloud. If he has a significant amount of musculature he doesn't need... 
He might be some kind of super soldier engineered to be that way. Maybe, said the vet. There's no way for me to confirm or refute that, but it is certainly a possibility. So, we have a carnivorous super soldier in a locked bunk, not even a cell, let alone a reinforced cell. That's just fucking great. Add to that the night beast caged in the bilge, and it's a wonder we aren't dead ten times over already. Well, in fairness, Steve N seems really nice, said the vet. Maybe make them fight, chuckled the ship's executive officer. He had begun to walk in to begin his shift while the captain and Ginto had been speaking. Captain Anticatoon smiled. Maybe. All right, y'all, so I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, go ahead and leave a like. If you have something you would like to talk to me about, go ahead and put it in the comments. If you would like to see more of myself, subscribe to the channel. And if you would like me to show up directly in your subscription feed, go ahead and hit the bell icon on the side. Have a nice one, y'alls.